Hi, my name is Katherine Conway and I'm the School Psychology Intern at Alliant. Today I will go over the California Guidelines of Dyslexia and our process in determining eligibility. So first I'm going to start out with the specific learning disability and what that is. So that means it's a disorder in one or more of the basic psychological processes involved in understanding or using language. This can be spoken or written and it can man manifest itself into the imperfect ability to listen, think, speak, read, write, spell, or to do any mathematical equations. Um, including conditions such as perceptual disabilities, brain injury, minimal brain dysfunction, dyslexia, um, and the basic psychological processes in can include attention, visual processing, auditory proce processing, phonological processing, sensory motor skills, cognitive abilities, including association, conceptualization, and expression. Um, it is important to include some ex exclusionary factors in the specific learning disabilities. So we want to make sure that in the specific learning disabilities that we don't include learning problems that are the primarily the primarily the reason uh, or result of visual hearing or motor disabilities. It can also include environment, cultural, or economic disadvantages. But what we mean by that is that if your child is having trouble hearing the differences in tone, emphasis on a specific syllable in a word. This can look like your child is having trouble with reading and it may cause concern for dyslexia. That would then lead us to determine that his brain is not processing those sounds correctly. However, if we find out um, and we rule out this exclusionary factor of a hearing impairment, then we would know that the child doesn't have an auditory processing deficiency, but rather just hard of hearing, and we can fix that with a hearing aid. So we wouldn't then misdiagnose him um, or assess him with dyslexia. We would then rule out that exclusionary factor of a hearing impairment, and then find out that your child actually does not have a hearing disability, or excuse me, dyslexia. Um, and that's also why school nurses are so important in our process. We would recommend that the school nurse does the hearing assessment, does a visual assessment, and then we'll start out on our um, basic assessments as well. So now I'm going to define dyslexia. So dyslexia is a specific learning disability that is a neurobiological in origin. It is characterized by difficulties with accurate or fluent word recognition, by poor spelling, and decoding abilities. These difficulties typically result in a deficient in phonological component of language that is often unexpected in relation to the cognitive abilities and the provision of effective classroom instruction. It can also include problems in reading comprehension, reduced reading experience that can impede the growth of vocabulary as well as background knowledge. So some important characteristics to look out for are difficulty in rhyming words, learning letter names and letter sounds, confusing letters and words with similar visual appearances, trouble spelling, spelling the same word different ways on the same page. Those are a couple things, characteristics that are common with dyslexia. Um, as for you, if you know uh, anyone in your family that has dyslexia, we would love for you to disclose that information because as we know, dyslexia is hereditary or can be hereditary. So now I'm going to go over the processes of identifying dyslexia and the different types. So um, in dyslexia, this the disorder may involve one, the form of language, two, the content of language, and three, the functioning of language in communication, and it can be any combination of that. Students are typically identified as having dyslexia when they exhibit a deficit it primary, uh, primarily affects their ability to decode. Um, dyslexia involves a specific deficit in a single word decoding that is based on a weakness in the phonological aspect of language that has only a secondary impact on reading comprehension, which distinguishes it from any other types of reading disability. However, spelling is almost always affected. 
Um, the majority of people with dyslexia have a core deficit in their phonological processing component of language. This process includes um, memory, awareness, naming speed, and because of the deficits in phonological processing, students with dyslexia have significant difficulty acquiring the sound letter and letter sound correspondence. And this is the foundation for fluent spelling and decoding skills. So just to reiterate, um, phonological awareness refers to the individual's awareness and access to the sound structure of oral language. Phonomic awareness is the component of phonological processing most directly linked to the acquisition of decoding and spelling skills. Um, and a significant deficit in one or more of these three aspects of phonological processing is often viewed as the primary cause of majority of cases in dyslexia. In addition, um, phonological processing deficits, students with dyslexia may have a history of delayed speech and language development. So to determine if the student has dyslexia, I would do a number of cognitive assessments to determine if there's a deficit in an audio or visual processing um, component in the brain. It's also just important to note that students with dyslexia often do face social and emotional challenges. You want to make sure that you're being aware um, that, you know, your child may have doubts of anxiety, depression, uh, they may have feelings of isolation, they may become embarrassed, and you can see this by them not wanting to read out loud in a classroom or kind of trying to do things that hide their disability. Um, and just let them know it's okay. Dyslexia is actually really common, um, a common form of a reading disability, and to let them know that we'll help them and then we'll find a way to for them to be more successful. Um, I want to end on a positive note and say that there is assistive technology. So of course, there's no cure for dyslexia. It's not going to just stop one day. However, there is assistive, assistive technology that does exist um, with anything to help a person with disability work around their challenges and learn to improve and function better in their environment. Assistive technology can reduce the amount of time that the student spends on schoolwork, and as a result, they will most likely become more confident and less stressed. Assistive technology will also make again, like I said, won't make the student's dyslexia go away. However, it provides a way around the student's challenges so that they can experience less frustration, develop a love for learning, and keep up with their intellectual growth. Some examples of assistive technology are audiobooks, text-to-speech, speech-to-text, smart pens, spell checkers, word prediction, and word pronunciation as well. So I don't want you to worry if your child is eligible to um, receive some of these accommodations. Um, there's a organization called FAPE, Free Appropriate Public Education, through special education or to remain in the least restrictive environment. The cost of this item cannot be a factor in determining the need for assistive technology. Under the IDEA Act that was passed in 2004, which is Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, the school district is responsible for the purchase and training in the use of this assistive technology. So no cost to you. So if you have any questions regarding the process of qualifying for a specific learning disability or dyslexia specifically, don't hesitate to ask.